Today is Saturday, November 6, 2010. We're here in Highlands Hammock State Park in Sebring, Florida, one of the original CCC parks in Florida. And we're here with Grady Lewis, uh, who was in the CCCs and is going to tell us what life was like uh, in those days. I'm Larry Levy. I'm president of the uh, local chapter of the CCC alumni, and we are sponsoring this uh, oral history project uh, along with the, the park as our partner uh, to make sure we have some records of what life was like back in the, uh, in the 1930s. Uh, Grady, can you repeat your name, tell us your age, and where you're living now? Uh, I'm Grady Lewis from Dade City, Florida, is where, where I live. Uh, and how old are you? Uh, maybe eight years old, back in September. Just turned 88 then. Okay, all right. Well done, well done. Now, just before you went into the CCCs, where were you living and what was life like in those days before you went into the CCCs? Well, before I went in, I joined the three C's. I was living in Holmes County, northwest of Bonifay, Florida, was where I was raised. And uh, I was raised on a farm. And there was at that back at that time in 19. 40, 39 and 40, there was no industrial or anything to work about. All you could do was farm. Mm -hmm. and so my dad was a farmer, and, and uh, I moved him on the farm. And then uh, the time come that uh, I have a brother that was older than I am, he joined the three C's in 36 and went in and he went to North, they sent him to North Carolina. And so I talked to dad about going in and well, they didn't think too much about uh, going or leaving home, see, mm -hmm. at my age. I was, I was only 17 then. And uh, so we talked about it and he uh, basically said, well, if you think you want to go, we'll, we'll go. So. So I went there down to Bonnepin and signed up. And so in January of 1940, on the 7th day of January, they called me to, or sent me a letter to come to Bonnepin to the office. So I went down and, uh, and they uh, said, well, you, you can go. So I, I I packed up what little junk I had and caught the train and went to Gainesville. And I got to Gainesville on Tuesday night and they took us out to a camp somewhere and fed us and we loaded up and about midnight and took us to the train station and loaded us on a train and shipped us all around through the north part of the state and the United States and all around by I got to California and I got out there on Saturday evening and, and uh, they put us in a camp and the name of the camp was Camp Pinto, California near Watsonville. Uh, Grady, let me interrupt you by asking why did you want to join the CCCs? Well, uh, at that time the only thing I could do was just help dad on the farm and uh, we, we had no income, nothing, and, uh -huh. and so we were just living off of uh, what we grew on the farm, and we had no income or anything like that. Okay. And time was getting was hard along then. I tell you that was that was some, some rough times. <laughs> yeah. Right along. Then. Okay, so when you did join, they sent you right out to California. Yeah. Okay, so you were in a CCC camp out there. I was in a camp out there. Okay, what kind of jobs did you work on? What kind of projects did you work on? Uh, out in California? Yes. Yeah, I was in a soil conservation camp. What we done uh, out there uh, was uh, help grape farmers and uh, things like that. The 
uh, land was washing away and such as that, and they were trying to build grape orchards, and the gullies were washing across their fields. So we'd go in and cut all the cut back on the grape vines, bundle them up, and build them down across these things all up and down there one side of the hill to the other, and that is pretty hilly land out there in places. But right where I was at in the Pajaro Valley there, that was flat land. That was just as flat as it could be. But uh, it was a, a beautiful place, so that's what we done. We, uh, we uh, hope the farmers, grape farmers, build uh, dams to hold up their keep the land from washing away, and, and they, 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 it it done a lot of good. It, it hoped to it stop all the washing. But once in a, one time, they called us out to try to help pie the fire. But that was the only time in that camp that, uh -huh. I, that I got to, was ever on the fire. Were you in other camps too? Sir? Did you go to other camps too, or just that one camp? No, I was in two different camps. Both in California? Uh, no. Uh, in Jan in Feb uh, July, I, my six months was up. I signed up for six months. Mm -hmm. So my time was up. They shipped me back to Bonnipe. And so I caught the train out of California and back to Bonnipe. And six months later, January of 41, I went back in and was stationed at a camp in Tallahassee. Oh. between Tallahassee and Crawfordville that uh, uh, was a, so, a forester camp. It was a forester camp. Forester so camp. We, we fought fires there. Oh, I did mean, you? We fought fires there. And, uh, but we done a lot of road work, rebuilding roads, a lot of bridges that had been built a long time ago was given away. We'd go in and tear them bridges out, like cement culverts, build the road back up, fix it up, all such like that, so. But uh, regardless of where we was at or whatever it was, when they called us if a fire broke out, we, we had to quit what we were doing, load up and go to the fire. Uh -huh. And so that was what I'd done back then. Uh, when, I, when I went there, that was the main thing. Of course, we done other things uh, uh, besides that. It's uh, like uh, we built a 4-H a, a club camp over on uh, Dogwood Lake, uh, a beautiful camp. I mentioned that a while ago. And uh, we got that thing all fixed up, eight barracks, and a bunch of girls come in and spent about a week there. And, and then... Uh, wait the, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> You built, what was it that you built up? A 4-H club camp. A 4-H club, okay. Yeah. So these girls were 4-H girls? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was, that was what we built. But the three C's built the camp. I see. And the camp it was way out in the uh, Old Color National Forest was where it was at. It was way, well, I guess it probably 10 or 12 miles out of Tallahassee to where it was located. And it was a beautiful camp and beautiful buildings and everything. And then, oh, you could have a, another bunch of girls in the army come in and it was supposed to be been a girl camp or what it was supposed to be or that was what was first there, I guess. They, later they probably was gonna let boys come. So, so uh, we had to, I, I really enjoyed, I, I, I think about it a long time. As, uh, what a privilege I had of helping with such as that to, to build, uh, help build a place like that. So you were proud of what you did while oh, you were yeah, in the CCCs. Yeah, I was. But I didn't mention it a while ago when I was talking about when I was in California. We didn't do all the work, but we hope way up on the side of a mountain out there they, they build an amphitheater. And uh, we went up there and had a bunch of little boys and worked to help and build a place. And they built a big swimming pool there. And I mean a big swimming pool and a big amphitheater. 
I, I, I would have had, had some pictures of it. When they pipe water from a spring four miles, a four inch pipe to fill that a swimming pool up, and I was some of as cold water as I've ever been in in my life. You couldn't back up under where that pipe poured in that pool. You couldn't back up there and let the water pour on your back. It was just that cold. It didn't knock you down. Uh -huh. and that, that was the coldest water that I, <laughs> that, uh, I ever seen. So uh -huh. that was a, a great thing for me to see that. And then while I was there, another thing I'd like to mention, if it's all right, uh, we cut a reservoir, a build big reservoir on a ranch out at Hollister, California. And a big ranch man had a thousand head of horses and things on the farm, a big farm. And he needed a place to hold water from the drain. So we cut a canal from a spring. I forget how far it was along, we ran the edge of a mountain through uh, apricot groves and a canal now in the dirt and run water in that reservoir. I got pictures of that, but I couldn't find them the other day. I, 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 I waited too late to hunt them. Mm -hmm. I figured on coming. And, uh, and, and we built a, a big reservoir there for those horses to have fresh water. It also had a spillway, water coming around that mountain through that canal round in, filled up this reservoir and then had a spillway. It was a, it was a complicated engineering job, it, it sounds it like. It was, and uh, I, maybe I can find them pictures someday, and if I can come back next year, I'll break them. Do that, do that. Grady, do you uh, have any memories of uh, Florida when you were in the CCCs in Florida, the kinds of things that you did, and, or does any day stand out uh, in your memory? Didn't quite understand you. Okay, I was wondering about when you were in the CCCs in Florida. Yeah. Does anything uh, in your mind stand out any particular day or what you did, uh, what projects you worked on? Uh, well, uh, I think one of the biggest experience I had, or whatever it might, you might call it, <clears throat> one one evening. Uh, they, they had a big fire in the, uh, in the old collar. Uh, what I can't call the name of the forest now. I, I didn't know, I remember what it was right now. I can't think of it. And the fire, they couldn't do nothing with it. And, and they was fighting the fire, and it was just burning up everything. And uh, we had a superintendent, a fella named Hines, a fine man. They called him and asked him if he would bring a, a bunch of his men down there and help fight that far. So one evening about 8 o'clock, they <laughs> blowed the siren for everybody to come out. And they said, go pack your clothes and get dressed and, and, and uh, carry a change in the clothes and everything, and uh, we're going to O'Callaghan. And they loaded up three truckloads, about, I'd say from 20 to 25 boys. I, I'd say boys back then. Yeah. <laughs> Just young boys. I, I, I was young. And, uh, and we rode all night long. We got where the far was, it went out from Old Keller out there in that big park. And man, there was that thing about hip pine trees. It was, uh, I don't believe I could reach around at that time. It was burning the straw out of the top of those trees. And we got there and Mr. Hines said, you boys, get your equipment. We're going to back far this far. And, and uh, so he sent us down a trail and uh, placed one of us ever so often with a flap or a shovel or something or another. And they took two far pots and farted it. And we beat the far out and let it start backing up towards the big far. And as it backed up, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and it just kept backing up. And when them two fars met about two o'clock that evening, 
it, the smoke was so bad until you couldn't even see the sun. I mean, it just clouded. I mean, you couldn't see the sun or nothing. And at four o'clock that evening, we got to the <laughs> we had rode all night down that back barn and I got back to the campsite. Uh, and, and they said, "Well, we ought to have a truckload of chow here in a few minutes." So I had a while the truck drove up with them old big boilers, uh, something to eat. And you talk about eating? Well, we we got it, but we we had our canteen and water and everything, and uh, got by on that. So that was by, I won about the greatest experience I had. Oh, I would think so. What did you do uh, yourself in fighting that fire? I, I, I had a, one of the more uh, things with a wide flap about that big that you fly the far with. And when it's coming out a little bit after the guy with the far part parted it, and it started spreading out, I'd flap out this coming back towards me and let that other keep backing towards the far. So that was, I had a, a flap. I had shovels to, to cover up uh, uh, derby and stuff that was still smoking or maybe a bar or something there to keep it from the, those 